Hello viewers, welcome to doctor's channel. Today Dr. Shailesh Garghe is with us, vascular specialist. Hello doctor. Doctor, can you describe us, what are fibroids? So, uh, you might have heard like a lot of fe uh, young females in the age of 20 to 40, they suffer from this uh, difficulty in uh, menstruation, pain during the time of menstruation, excess bleeding. So, the most common cause for the pain and all what we see in the young uh, patients is, is fibroids. Fibroids are nothing but they are the non-cancerous, they are not the cancer, just a benign growth of the muscles of the uterus. So they, they can grow in any part, right from the, um, the fundus, the main body, and sometimes even the cervix. So they are just the uh, uh, extra growth, a uh, benign tumor we can call it, benign tumor of the muscles of the fibro uh, uterus, that is called fibroids, and they are, can all be, also be called myomas of the uterus. So they are non-cancerous, so nothing to worry that there is very less possibility, uh, rare, very rare possibility that they can convert into uh, fibroids. But most pa patients, they go under treatment only because of the pressure symptoms of uh, uh, fibroid, because of the excess bleeding or pain or difficulty uh, in the urination or the bowel habits. So those are the main reasons. Doctor, are there any types? Basically, the types are actually classified there only because uh, depending upon their location, where they are exactly located, whether they are towards the inner lining of the uterus or within the muscle exactly or towards the out outer wall of the vessel. So the inner is called the submucosal the middle, the in, in the center, they are called the intramuscular and towards the surface that is subserosal. And uh, depending upon their location, they also cause the uh, dif see different symptoms or the presentation to the uh, to the patients. So suppose if they are located towards the inner lining, then, then there can be excess of bleeding or pain during the mens uh, menstruation. So these are the symptoms. If they are intramuscular, then again the pain and excess of bleeding because of the improper contactility of the uterus during the time of menses. And if they are subserosal, mean towards the surface, they can um, can cause more of the pressure symptoms. Means they, they might be pressing the, your, the urinary bladder that, uh, as well uh, or the rectum. So they can have the problem with the, with the difficulty in the urination or excess of urination or they, the patient won't be able to pass the urine properly or uh, with the motions. So depending upon the lesions, locations, they can cause the different symptoms in the pa patients as well. Mm -hmm. Doctor, what are the diagnostic methods? The symptoms uh, will tell you and uh, depending on the age of the patient. But the most common investigation what we uh, do is the ultrasound of the pelvis to see uh, whether it's per abdomen or through the uh, uh, internal uh, scanning uh, that is transvaginal. So that you will get, uh, get a good idea about all the fibroids, where they are located, what is the size and uh, all those uh, things about the fibroids. So ultrasound is, is the, uh, the first line investigations. Uh, for the fibroids but uh, you can uh, sometimes if there is difficulty or exactly you know we can do uh, uh, the higher investigations when when we, we have some doubt like, like MRI of the pelvis uh, uh, and internal examination MRI of the pelvis this can be done but usually the ultrasound will give you most of the information. Doctor what are the treatment options are for it? So basically uh, uh, what the treatment options uh, right from the olden days what we know is anything like in the fibroid once done you just uh, most of the uh, patients what are advised uh, is the hysterectomy this is removal of the uterus and it will solve all the problem that's not the solution like suppose a young patient who's not married or who is in a ch child bearing age want to have ch children you can't remove the uterus which uh, you should ask you are always ask your gynecologist what are the alternatives so there are definitely the alternatives for the fibroids that is uterine artery embolization so this uterine, in, in uterine fibroid embolization or artery embolization, what we do, we'll go and cut the blood supply to the fibroids. Mm -hmm. So you are, you are only uh, tackling the fibroids, you are not removing the uterus he, here. And it's a very uh, simple, safe, effective procedure. It's a daycare procedure where you can go uh, through, a, through a tiny opening in the groin and go to the blood supply, the artery which is supplying the fibroids and block that artery. So you are cutting off the blood supply to the fibroid so that, that way the fibroid will die and slowly shrink in size and you are, in that way you are tackling the fibroid not removing the uterus so you can preserve the uterus so any patient they just to anyone who don't want to remove the uh, normal uterus or normal organ uh, when there is only problem at the localized that is fibroids don't want to remove the whole fibroid just uh, whole whole uterus just because of the fibroids so this option is very effective and um, this treatment we are doing and it is one of the frontline treatment in the uh, US. So, uh, but the awareness about the uterine fibroid embolization in the Indian population is very less because of the unavailability of uh, the such doctors also performing this uh, uterine fibroid. 
and even the patients awareness among the patients is also very less for the uterine fibroid embolization thanks for the useful information doctor thank you i hope you found this video useful so don't forget to like share subscribe to our channel